Hello, my name is Jane. It's a great pleasure and privilege to be sharing some reflections with you on our next section in the Gospel of Luke. So today we're in Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through to verse 43, and this is Jesus' crucifixion. And I'll just start off by reading this passage for us. Two of the men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. What really strikes me is the contrasting responses of the two criminals who were crucified alongside Jesus. The first criminal didn't recognise Jesus. He didn't meet his expectations. This criminal was expecting a Messiah to come in to make everything better, to save them from this awful situation of being crucified. But Jesus didn't come to save himself or the criminals from death or from escaping physical punishment. Actually, it's a recurring theme in the story of the people of Israel with God. That the people of Israel have different expectations from God, from what living under his rule meant. We see this in the first book of Samuel, chapter 8, where Israel has rejected God as king through serving other gods. And the people of Israel come to Samuel and say they want their own version of a king. They say, we want a king over us. We want to be like the other nations with a king to lead us and to go before us and to fight our battles. But the thing is that Jesus had a much bigger battle in mind than just battles against other rulers. We see a paradox here, that to save people from their sins, Jesus wasn't going to save himself. In fact, he was going to lay his life down. We also see a prophecy fulfilled here. Jesus, after he has celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples, talks about being numbered with the transgressors and this prophecy being fulfilled. This prophecy is from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12, where it says, He poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. We could think about this chapter in Isaiah as referring to a description of the suffering servant. And we certainly see that in Jesus' character, a humble servant who came to suffer. What about the other criminal? So he recognised who Jesus was, the Messiah who saves people from their sins. And why was that? But well, we see that this criminal recognised the fear of God. So he feared God and he saw that Jesus was blameless. 
And it's so beautifully simple when he says to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We see such love and humility from Jesus on the cross. That he had this conversation with this criminal when he was in the most excruciating pain. And he said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. But we see that Jesus is in control. Going to the cross was not some accident. It was all part of God's redeeming plan. In John chapter 10, verse 18, it says, from Jesus, he says, No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and take it up again. This command I received from my Father. So this part of the crucifixion is a story of Jesus suffering, but also it's a picture of God's love for us. Jesus would lay his life down for us. And it's really clearly stated in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8, where it, it says that but God showed his love for us, that whilst we're still sinners, Christ died for us. And our response to this is, I think, simply just one of thankfulness for what Jesus did, what he sacrificed for us, that we might be made right with God, that we can be in a relationship with him. Uh, that's just my prayer for us now, and I'll uh, finish with this. Lord Jesus, thank you um, for your love, for your humility. Thank you for your sacrifice for us. I pray you would help us to be always thankful for what you have done. In your name, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>